you like this episode, please subscribe, share with others, rate and review so we can continue to bring you great programming. This is The Thing About Cars, a podcast for car enthusiasts and the people who love them. Hello, we are back with another episode of The Thing About Cars. We've got four of us around the table today. I'm one of your hosts, Mickey Desai. I see Ben. How are you, Ben? Hey, pretty damn good. How about you? I'm good. Misty, how are you? Cold. Oh, you're not old. Dave, I said hi. cold. Oh, Thank cold. you. Really <laughs> cold, yes. Okay. I, uh, I imagine it is cold. Uh, Dave, how are you, sir? I am just a figment of your imagination. I would not be surprised today. My dreams have been off-scale weird. If you guys want a, a little glimpse into my psychology, I can, I can tell you that Ben and Dave have both appeared in my dreams this week, and, and both of them were equally just bizarre. And ben, we aim to please. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work. We aim for the groin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, you know, you could do both and maybe hit both two birds with one stone. I don't know. Misty, so. Misty you're right. You are cold. <laughs> what, what, what was it that, that Mickey said about me one time? Started with the word cast iron. I Did I say that? I didn't say yes, that. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You said it. <laughs> you said it. Well, uh, I wasn't first, insulted. The, well, right. And you shouldn't be. It's a, it's a compliment. The first dream was ben, it had Ben in it. Ben was a, a, a drummer in a Rush cover band. And the, oh the drum kit that we had, and I was like the, a manager or a roadie or something, and we had a show for some kind of a school or co college audience. It was the weirdest thing. It was like we were setting up in this 4-H cabin in the woods somewhere, and <laughs> it was just, I'm looking at this ratty gear, and I'm like, Ben's going to play this? And then I picked up a pair of sticks, and it actually played really well for looking as crappy as it did, you know, broken hardware and stuff like that. It, it actually sounded really good as a drum set, and, 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 and it just kind of got weirder and weirder after that it was it was me running around trying to make sure the sound was right so i'm running backstage to fix the soundboard except the soundboard was in the middle of the audience and and then the whole thing opened up and dogs started attacking each other and i ran <laughs> uphill on this this long sloping hill, grassy hill to to get something because there was like a street festival happening outside on the grassy hill or not street bowl, but you know some sort of art festival and then the whole thing flooded like huge torrents of water just just took out the entire setup and here i am caught up in a flume of water that's taking me back down towards the stage and i'm like just what the heck is going on here i don't i don't know what any of this means it's just bizarre have I'm sure, you yeah. thought about not eating cheese before dinner <laughs> Speaking as a bassist, I would play drums if it meant I could have Neil Peart's car collection. Yes, that would be a nice thing to have. For, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, how long were you asleep? Two and a half days? My my dreams, Dave, are always weird and colorful. And and this, but lately in the last week or so, they've just been beyond surreal. And I don't know what that is. Even, even by my standards, they're weird. I but, didn't uh, have that much content in my master's thesis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm I'm right there with you, Mickey. I mean, it's it's been a very weird, actually, past couple of weeks, and I'm yeah. just waking up and going, "Excuse me, brain, what? Okay, first, yeah. is that necessary? Yeah, and second, what the hell? Right, where did that come from? Yeah, like I'm having these dreams where I'm waking up, going, "No, that can't be real because that thing is still in my car and it works. So why is my brain trying to tell me to fix this thing that's not broken? Anyway, it, the dream well, I had, it, yeah." At least your dream, you know, at least your dreams aren't causing you to wake up and going, no, those people are no longer with us on the physical plane. <laughs> well, you know, the, you know. yeah, I, I have other dreams where I wake up saying no, but that's different. I, I'm going to talk to my therapist about those. But <laughs> Yeah, I was about to suggest. I was about to say, sweetie. But the dream I had with Dave in it, we were um, uh, at a bar and I can't remember what preceded this moment. We were all like hanging out. And we went to a bar and a pub and I, I was, we were just talking. And then I turned to look at Dave and Dave will not look at me in this dream. Like Dave in this dream is pissed off and he's he's giving me the silent treatment except it's like the silent treatment times 10 it's not just the absence of words it's like he's sucking the life force of words out, out of the air around him and just doesn't want to have anything to do with me and i'm like talk to me tell me what i did was it was something i said what's going on and it just it, it was greatly upsetting i started crying in the dream i'm like i just killed a friendship here and i don't even know why and then i woke up and and then i had to go pee so i don't know what that was all about it was the, just the weirdest thing it's much much shorter dream but just equally as surreal. It's just like, what did I do? And yeah. 
Did you forget to compliment his sunglasses? <laughs> mm. But sadly, Dave, I don't remember what you were wearing in the dream. I think I think we have found the cause <clears throat> yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, the, the, there, there's so much going on there, and I'm tempted to just sit here silent for the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Cruel but, and unusual uh, punishment. That's not yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially, <laughs> especially to me. <laughs> the, the, the two elements of truth are in that dream are, first of all, the association of Dave and alcohol. Yes. That is one of, key one of my brand equities. And second, <laughs> the ability to weaponize silence is a family characteristic. I don't try it out very often, but if my mother went cold and just looked at you with one eyebrow raised, life as you knew it was over. Yeah. And, but did and she my... fold laundry angrily in your direction? Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. okay, see? Yeah, that, that, that angry silence, that ability to actually suck all communication out of nearby space into, into to a black void of hostility <laughs> is a family gift. And since you've not seen it, I wonder how you figured out our superpowers. I, you know, I don't know. It's just very strange. I'm starting to think these were less <clears throat> dreams and more astral projections. No, I, you know, if I, I'm counting on my friends to tell me that if I piss them off, that they will tell me why. Actually, um, I, think, I think there's some, some truth to Misty, Misty's concept. You know, I'm spending a lot of time on the astral plane and the nightlife there is incredible. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm rather fond of the Demi Mon to myself, you know. <laughs> shall we, shall we steer this thing back to the world of cars? That sounds novel. Sure. So I've got That's actually. That's what it was. He got the Jeep a new accessory, and you didn't notice. <laughs> ah. That may be it, but yeah, uh, you know what? The Jeep would have to be wearing pearls at this point. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you All painted right. the bumper. So I've got two items of trivia today. We've got a little bit of catching up to do, so we're going to do two things and answer both of them at the end of the show. Are you guys ready? Yep. Hit us. All right. So ready these are I'll ever be. these are both from Trivia Czar Tim. And the first question is, what was a common heating system used on cars built 100 years ago? Four choices here. A, was it a valve typically under the hood that was opened to route hot engine oil through a finned oil cooler under the dashboard? Most oil coolers used very thin tubing, but some engines required extra oil to be added to the crankcase. B, was it a steel heater box containing burning charcoal or preheated brick, which was then placed on the vehicle's floor? C, was it electrical current routed through a large heating element located under the dash? Some generators could not generate enough current to power both the headlights and the electrical heater at the same time. Or D, was it all of the above 100 years ago? Do I need to read those again? I think I got them. Okay. I got them. All right. So the second question I have, three choices. The question is, why is it harder to buy newer used cars built between 2009 and 2011 than it is to buy older used cars that are built between 2005 and 2007. The choices are, A, the continuously variable transmission CVT was introduced on many models starting in 2009, and those early CVT designs were problem prone. B, most states phased out emissions testing for models built between 2009 and 2011, making these vehicles more desirable and more likely to be retained by existing owners. Or C, about 25% fewer new cars were sold from 2009 to 2011 compared to the older time frame, 2005 to 2007. It's fewer new cars sold back then means fewer used cars available today. So which of those is the incorrect answer? We will answer those at the end of the show. Misty, you've got some stress happening about the, the races? Yeah. Oh, God. It's been a, a word I can't say on the show, like, <laughs> all weekend. They opened... Uh, this weekend is the next to last race for Formula One, and it was supposed to be the last race for Formula no, Yeah, also the next to last race for Formula Two. Both the championships still up in the air, mostly. F2 is a little, but this is a brand new track in Saudi Arabia, in Jeddah, actually. Like, brand new, as in the FIA finally cleared it and certified it Friday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's been concerns about construction outside the track like they're still doing construction it's a street circuit so the walls are really narrow it's it's really a lot like uh, monaco uh was watching the for what was supposed to be the formula two feature race today two red flags i'm not even sure if they got 10 laps 
in. There was a huge, horribly nasty accident. Enzo uh, Fittipaldi, who is the grandson of Emerson Fittipaldi, also Formula One fame, uh, rear-ended Theo Pocher, who was stalled. 72G crash. Wow. We still don't have word on the extent of any injuries. We What we do know uh, right now from the FIA is both drivers are okay. It's rumored that Fittipaldi has a broken ankle, but somebody else is saying it's not. They haven't even shown the replay of the crash, and this crash happened an hour and a half, two hours ago. So the Formula One race is scheduled to start in like 10 minutes from now. Damon Hill, who is uh, a former Formula One driver and uh, commentator for Sky Sports, has been uh, is on record as saying he thinks there's going to be a, a serious crash, uh, if not serious yeah. injury at yeah. this track. There's a lot of concerns, you know, because they built this track in eight months. You know, there well, hasn't been time for the ground to settle. It's it's concerning. Well, it's it's a it's also a race that's fraught with some political problems as well. I can't remember his name, but some driver went online saying that he was doing this race because he had to, not because he wanted to. That and was he, Lewis Hamilton. And that's it. It, you know, if you've been listening long enough, you know how I feel about Lewis Hamilton as a driver, as a person. I really support him and you know, love him. I missed the we wet race is one thing, so I'm wondering if Sebastian Vettel wore his rainbow shirt because Sebastian is really really a uh, big also on equal rights and Sebastian Vettel bless his heart I love him he's wholesome he actually organized a karting event in Saudi Arabia this week that was only for women yeah, I he's heard really, that. He's yeah. really pushing to get more women into F1. So it was a karting event that was only for women. So, you know, he's he's my new uh, cuddle toy. I just love him. He's so sweet. <laughs> so, but that that was like the highlight. But right now, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm really concerned. And, and Well, I know the world is watching over there and I hope everybody escapes injury today and that they just have a good race. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, as much as I want Max to win the world championship, you know, I've made, I've, I've never hidden the fact that first and foremost, I'm, I'm a McLaren fan. Secondly, I'm a Max fan and I don't particularly like Lewis but I don't want anybody you know I don't want anybody injured and I don't want you know certainly don't want anybody killed right and I think we also I want to take a moment also to mark the passing of Sir Frank Williams yeah. who was a major major contributor to F1 and uh, a loss that will be felt greatly you know he was he was an amazing man and yep. uh, mm -hmm. Sky Sports had a nice tribute to, to him on that cheers cheers to him yeah. yeah. Cheers and, and rest in peace and yep. uh, Godspeed, sir. And thank you for what you've done. Yep. So uh, does this mean you're going to tune out from the show in 10 minutes, Misty, to go watch the race? No. I mean, I'm going to still be here, but you may see my eyes cut over to the side because I'm yeah. going to watch. The, I want to at least watch the start and yeah, yeah, then yeah. I'll close. Then I'll minimize the window and give you my full <laughs> undivided attention. Of course, if I lose the ability to speak, <laughs> please understand that something has happened. Give me a moment and I'll tell you all. I do not believe you would lose the ability to speak even with a debilitating stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I actually lost the ability to form words last night when Max shunted into the wall on that amazing lap that cost him the pole position in qualifying. You know, I would mm. like, though, for a future show specifically to, to for us to address the naming and numbering nomenclature of formula racing. Because there's Formula One, Formula Two, Formula Three, Formula Four, Formula E, Formula Three Regional, IndyCar, IndyCar Light, Formula Super Formula, Formula Pi, Formula Two RK, Formula Forty Two, Formula Four O Nine. Why aren't you picking on? Why aren't you picking on Porsche Super Cup? They have two leagues that race in the same race. Yeah, because I don't. Because I none of us have the passion. I think for the Porsche Super League that you have for Formula. And, you, know, <laughs> like, you know, this this is more confusing than the Windows naming nomenclature. We'll have to do a Grecian Formula Forty Four. Should go on that list as well. <laughs> oh. Um, that's but all the, fine and good, but I think that that the bunch of us still need to do a uh, 24 Hours of Lemons team. Okay, yeah, we need to do that. So next week, let's make a note for next week's recording. We're going to go through and explain the differences in the formula nomenclatures and try to do that in 10 minutes or less. You think that's possible? <laughs> Worth a shot. <laughs> All right, next week, we'll put that on the agenda, even if it takes more than 10 minutes. So It um, may take more than 10 minutes. We, we, it may have to be a two-parter. Right. <laughs> Tune in next week for the first all-day thing about cars. <laughs> it's the thing about cars marathon, which, you know, yes. we, yeah. We and, need and, to, and, yeah. And if you call in and send us money, 
We'll, we'll donate it to like yeah. St. Jude's Hospital or something. I would love to organize a lemons race too. I think that would be kind of a cool thing to do. We need to see if our friends at one of these local tracks, like maybe Trivia Czar Tim can help us with that. That would be a, a yeah, good he, thing to talk to him about. He's connected. Yeah, he is. So Misty, you had brought up a, a topic in chat that I thought was a great thing to talk about. And we were going to examine mysteries. You put down three choices, McLaren F1, Jim Morrison's Mustang or Little Bastard, which was James Dean's car. Which one are we going to talk about today? Well, considering it's a race weekend, we're going to do Where is the McLaren F1, right. which features probably the most god-awful, what were you people thinking, color scheme, <laughs> Ron Dennis, and a Mexican drug cartel. What? Yeah. Plus the illegal import and export of cars. Okay. We're all familiar with the McLaren uh, F1. We actually had Ricky Rackman said, he said, I drove a McLaren, I didn't like it. And we all yeah. kind of went, huh? <laughs> they were produced between 1992 and 1998. Mm -hmm. There were only 106 of them produced. And currently they're going for right around 10 to 20 million US dollars at auction. And each chassis, each car is numbered. Now, car we're talking about today is 039 or 39. Okay. It was a 1996 model that was originally built for C for then McLaren CEO Ron Dennis. The exterior was Brazilian brown metallic, which right there I'm going, dude, really? Yeah, I'm looking at the pictures now. That looks very strange. The interior was red leather. Um, and I went, huh? Sweetie, no, it looks like a steak. Admittedly, a <laughs> properly cooked steak with glitter on it. Edible <laughs> glitter. His wife, Lisa, his wife, Lisa, who apparently is the voice of reason in their household, didn't like it and said, Ron, honey, no, I'm putting my foot down. I'm counting to three. You, you, no, you're not getting this car. So Dennis took uh, chassis number 50, which was silver, and chassis 39 was reportedly sold to another UK-based buyer. Now, here's where it gets weird. So from okay. 1996, we hear nothing more about this car until 2004. When photos of a brown McLaren were taken in Mexico, which they based this on the plates of other cars in the in the background as reference, and these were uploaded to exot to a website called Exotic Spotter. There's no firm date, you know, on these on these photos, but they're saying late '90s, early 2000s. Then in 2007, a thread pops up on AutomotiveForums.com trying to figure out which F1 this was. And why is this F1 in a known Mexican drug cartel hotspot? Why? El Chapo. Not quite. Almost. No, okay. Various Mexican car forums said that 39 was imported illegally in the early 2000s and belonged to a high-ranking member of the Silaneo cartel, which was run by El Chapo. The reported owner is a guy named Humberto Olleda, or El Robo Chivas, the goat thief. I should have put goats in this. Goat thief. He was killed in 1997 in a gunfight. And after his death, they couldn't find the keys to this McLaren. So they go to McLaren and McLaren, and you know, like I said, there's no firm facts for this part of the story. Either McLaren wouldn't issue a new key without like concrete proof of ownership, or they wanted like two to three thousand dollars, two to two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars to make a new key. So either way, no key, no go. And the car was hidden either in a garage or under a tarp in the middle of the field, and they for and it was just forgotten about. Little blips of interest here and there until 2020, and someone contacted a guy named Ed Bullion, who is the Venn Wiki founder, with info on, 30, on car 39's location and trying to find a buyer for it. Then all of a sudden, they couldn't locate the car because the person that was supposed to be in charge of the car died a few years ago. Oops. And there's actually a YouTube video showing Bullion's search. But it all boils down to even if they found it, there's probably no owner documentation. It would require a multi-million dollar restore. And the Mexican government would probably seize it anyway. So, but now here's the really weird part. The number plate on the car, on 39, which is number plate P44CPJ, was spotted on car 06R which was owned by a former McLaren commercial director, David Clark. 06R is a racing spec F1, which is infinitely more rare than a regular one and more valuable than 39. You see it at racing events like all over the globe, but P440CPJ plate is still registered in the UK to car 39, and it has been since 2005. So how did it get there? 
but there's no history for this plate from 97 to 2004. So the theories are the number plate was replicated illegally and transferred so that 06R could drive legally on the street. Yeah. Not likely, but it's a theory. It's possible. The other one, which is more likely and still weird, is that 39 was imported illegally, was, was smuggled out of Mexico into the UK and turned into a replica of 06R. This isn't unusual because there have been people that have made replicas of like super valuable cars that they want to take and show, you know, like take out and about and show off. Right. You know, I mean, if I had a 06R and I could turn a 39 to look like that, I would rather take 39 out, you know, in case somebody decided to touch my car and scratch it. So, but at the end of the day, we still don't know for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, where 39 is. It has a number plate that's registered to it in the UK from 2005. There's zero history between 1997 and 2004. At one point, it was supposedly sitting either in a garage or in a field in Mexico after its Mexican cartel drug owner got shot. And it, it, nobody knows where this car is. I mean, there's other missing McLarens, but most of those you can pretty much say they're in the garage of a Saudi prince because some dude bought like 10 of them pocket change, I'm sure, you know, but this one is the really weird one. You know, it went from the UK to Mexico and now is apparently back in the UK if you believe the registration paperwork. So all I can hope is that somebody changed the paint because who wants to drive a car that looks like medium rare steak with edible glitter on it. <laughs> Very weird. So the mystery remains. Will, you, will we ever know definitively? Probably not unless David Clark, you know, comes out and says, yeah, I, I, you know, I own both 06R and number 39, but then right. he's going to have to explain how 39 went from eating tamales to bangers and mash. <laughs> Maybe he used it as a parts car. Yeah, but then, you, yeah, but then you still don't, I don't know that that's even logical because it, what parts yeah. from, you know, a standard build, a standard build of a $20 million car, sure, fit onto, you know, a racing spec. Right. I don't and, know. But to, yeah. to me personally, though, the biggest mystery of all of this is why someone would order a car that looks like a medium rare steak with edible glitter on it. <laughs> hmm. But brown and red do go together. Not yeah. on a car. Not on a car. No. I mean, if, if it had been like this B Brazilian brown whatever glitter with cream colored seats, see, yeah. no, that's okay. But red leather seats on a brown car? No. Son, what were you thinking? <laughs> now, you know, in the 18 months that I've been affiliated with this show, the one thing that has never uh, ha has been like a repeated theme is a strong distaste for the color brown in cars. That Misty's brought it up with red when we had the Williams sisters on, they brought it up with their car. And there's a large number of stories involved uh, of bad st car stories involving brown cars. <laughs> Well, I mean, my, mm. my, my Toyota Corolla, that, that 78 that I had, you know, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have tried to destroy it if it hadn't been brown. Mm. <laughs> well, a mystery still. Yeah. And thank you. I Mickey. think actually, yeah, I think actually, Mickey, you're going to have to go dream about this. I'm probably going to dream about it. It's, it's weird. This, um, this, this <laughs> rare glimpse into my psychology. I'll dream it and then we'll have to go find it. Um, Dave, mm. I got five bucks. He comes back with the answer in two weeks and he dreamed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, need, I, I got it. I got five bucks so that he comes back dreaming he was Carol Channing. <laughs> <laughs> Which of these is more likely? If ben, needed... where's your five bucks? You can't... Now, now, now Ben has to put five bucks on which one is more likely. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I'm having trouble making up my mind. <laughs> yeah, we've had that weird glimpse into my psychology today. And yeah, anyway. Oh, speaking of psychology, this has nothing to do with psychology. This is like the weirdest segue in the world. But I read recently that the creators of Paddington Bear, the people who actually made the first real touchable huggable plushy paddington bear you guys know who they were this is gonna be pretty gunned. good Mossad. it was not a nun no i said gunned oh gunned <laughs> get your mind out of the priory gutter <laughs> i heard none sorry <laughs> get, get thee to a nunnery it, it, it's not it's not a show without a nun reference <laughs> uh, allegedly they were jeremy clarkson's parents oh wow and jeremy clarkson had the first paddington bear ever <laughs> so I think they should have kept the Paddington bear. Yeah. <laughs> right. How you much about him does it explain? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to posit that 
forty-five percent of his issues are because Mummy loved Paddington Bear more than him. Oh, <laughs> is he real? Does he really? Is it's like he is just a? Is what's wrong with him? Let me just ask that. You know, it's interesting. It would be you, a shorter list to ask what's not wrong. Dave, you're about to say. It's an interesting aspect that you put up because in a related story, yes. if you ever read the stories of Christopher Robin Milne, who was the, the Christopher Robin of Winnie the Pooh fame, he lived by and large a really angry, dysfunctional life, all because of all of the attention that was paid to his childhood because of the world's most loved bear. And so apparently, even though Pooh is kind of lovable, Christopher Mill, I mean, yeah, Christopher Robin Mill, kind of an ass. <laughs> well, That's very sad. Segue into that. My second tattoo, which I have on my shoulder, is the old fashioned Eeyore, mm -hmm. the one standing on his head. And I actually removed the tail, you know, put it over to the side. So when people so, are be like, you know, they're like, Eeyore the man. Yeah, Eeyore, the manic depressive stuffed animal. Love him. Mm. He's such a role model. Um, you know, and people are like, you know, you've got your ass on your shoulders. And I turn around and point to it and I go, yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's all, it's all about maintaining. A, oh, my gosh. I, I do have a car story to tell. You do? A car story. Yeah, yeah, Yes. Go. My best friend here in the Netherlands, a lovely American woman who is entirely too nice for her own good, recently came into an inheritance and she was being extremely pragmatic to the point of me stepping in and going, honey, you're having to put more money in your current car than it's actually worth. And it's time for you to have a new to you car. I understand, you know, she's gr grew up in Quincy, Illinois, which is a town about it's a little speck on the map. So very much that Midwestern frugality. And I'm like, and she's like, but I love it. I'm like, it's, you're literally holding it together with duct tape and bailing wire. So she goes out and she's like, she's like, fine, I'm going to get me a good newer model used car. And both her and I, we like to dress vintage 1950s. She got the most adorable mint green Fiat 500 Cabrio. And we both have mint mm -hmm. green dresses to match. It is the most adorable thing. I love it. It is beautiful. It's perfect. It's 100% her. And then I read that Fiat, Fiat's actually coming out with a 500 EV. Oh, yeah. Mint green should not go on a car. No, this one is gorgeous. It is it it is so perfect. It is that 1950s yeah, yeah, yeah. mint I, green with cream leather seats, cream accents. It is it looks like what is what, what is the south? No, y'all aren't from the south. Y'all not gonna know this. The south the, the salad with the pineapple and the marshmallows and the lime jello. It looks oh. just like that. And it's yeah. Waldorf. Waldorf, 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 Waldorf. Yeah. Waldorf salad. And it is perfect. It fits her to a T. And I was just so happy to see somebody having so much joy in a, in a new to them car. Just like. That's I think nice. y'all need to put on those, um, those dresses that match it and do a big, fantastic photo shoot with it. I agree. I think. I, I think we will, when the weather warms up, because they are definitely summer dresses. And right now it is five degrees uh, Celsius and ooh, raining yeah, sideways. Yeah, that might, yeah, that might not be. <laughs> I'm not willing to lose body parts to frostbite is she, just um, to satisfy you, Ben. Is she gonna, <laughs> I mean, there's dedication, but that would be beyond, above and beyond. That, yeah, I don't, right. I don't lose, I don't lose body parts to frostbite. Would, uh, is she going to name the car Waldorf? No, her, her, I think, let me double check. I think she actually named the car Midge. Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, oh, Midge, the yeah, the Midge doll, the Barbie doll's evil t younger sister. <laughs> See, it's perfect. You know, it's perfect. Yes, you know, Mid yeah, Midge was the Jan Jan Brady of the Mattel plastic yeah. play world. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> exactly, but you know, but but, but this car is—I is, mean, it's literally it's so adorable. I mean, it's just so cute, and it's well, just so her. We can't wait to see that photo shoot, Misty. So let's let's make that happen. Yeah, I'm um, going to make that happen. So I've got two trivia questions we need to answer. You guys ready? Then we wrap ready. the episode. All right, we'll do the second one first. That question was, why is it harder to buy a used car built from 2009 to 2011 than it is to buy an older used car that was built somewhere between 2005 and 2007? Choices are, uh, we'll do them in reverse order. Answer C, about 25% fewer car new cars were sold from 2009 to 11 compared to the older period, 2005 to two. Fewer new cars sold back then means fewer used cars available to B, most states phased out emissions testing for models built between 2009 to 11. So people are hanging on to those cars and not selling them. Or A, 
The continuously variable transmission CVTs introduced in many models starting in 2009, and those early CVT designs are were very problematic, problem prone. Uh, Dave, what do you think? You know, I'm going to go with answer C. Based on purely economic reasons, we were in an economic downturn for those two years following the, the real estate crash. So it makes sense to me there'd be fewer cars. Right. Okay. All right. Good choice. Misty, what do you think? Yeah, I'm going to go with C2. Otherwise, my answer is D. The economy sucked and nobody had money to buy a new car. So there's now no used cars. <laughs> ben, what do you think? Yeah, I think I'm on C as well. It's unanimous, and that is the correct answer. That D is the same as C, Miss D. The economy sucked, and so people didn't buy cars at, during that time frame. So, because we all thick with triple C's, <laughs> so throw that in there. Triple C is that a thing? Triple C's? Yes. I thought apparently. that. Apparently, we'll have to have this conversation offline. So we're not going to do the thing about bras today. <laughs> I've, well, that's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> Brave of you to assume that I've worn one in the past year and a half. <laughs> I, you know, it's only my house, man. I hadn't, I hadn't noticed. Because um, <laughs> I wear baggy clothes. That's true. Because I'm right. always cold. Second question. The question was, what was a common heating system used on cars built a hundred years ago? The choices in reverse order again are: electric current was routed through a large heating element under the dash. And they did that uh, via a second generator because some generators could not produce enough current to power both the headlights and a heater at the same time. B, a steel heater box containing burning charcoal or a preheated brick was placed on the vehicle's floor. Or A, a valve typically under the hood was opened to route hot engine oil through a finned cooler located under the dash. Most oil coolers used very thin tubing, but some engines required extra oil to be added to the crankcase. Or D, all of the above. Uh, ben, you go first. I'm thinking that's all the above. Really? Yeah, there were a lot of crazy things back in the early days, and there and those are all plausible. And I think I've seen examples of most of them. No, okay, Misty, what do you think? B or in you know an alternate universe, E raccoons. Raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> they're uh, warm. Davy Crockett wore one of them on his head. They warm. <laughs> not, not when they're dead. <laughs> but then that gives you something to talk to and well, to you know. The live ones know. bite. Yes, it's only true. if you bite I first, mean, Dave. I mean, only if I, you bite first. So I've heard. <laughs> Dave, what do you think the answer is? I think it's I think it's all of the above. I am pretty certain. And the one that's most on land is just the one I'm most certain of was a bowl a, a metal box of charcoal under the seat. That's the that's truth. how they warm their beds. So why not yeah. your car? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the answer is correct. It's D all of the above. All of these were solutions used to heat cars back a hundred years ago. <gasps> we gotta so. upgrade. We're all triple D's. You now. Should... <laughs> and you should see some of the ignition systems back then too. You know, way back before uh, timed spark was really invented, they had some engines that had literally a hot piece of brass that stuck into the cylinder, and on the outside there was a little gas flame heating it. Oh, that wow. sounds um, incredibly safe. <laughs> oh yeah, and there were and there were carburetors that relied on nothing more than evaporation of a large amount of fuel in in an enclosed container, but a lot of surface area inside a fuel tank to produce vapor to suck into the engine yep lots sure. and lots of weird cockamamie things in early car technology <laughs> yep. let's just make this metal can hurtling down the road as safe as possible uh thank you misty for our, our mclaren mystery today thank you to no trivia czar tim we'll have to get tim on the show maybe next week so we can talk about the formula one thing together and thanks to our listeners for joining us as always if you have a moment to rate or review us please do it makes us more searchable to other car people and uh, we hope you and yours are being safe we will see you with another episode in about a week take care everybody Smile. Laters. Thank you for listening. This has been The Thing About Cars. We'll see you on the road.